so I was going through my old notes and realized that I was supposed to make a dragging system some time ago. So that's what this video is going to be about. But as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. Also check out my Patreon page since this place is going to be available there for paid members. But anyways, let's just get to it. And this system is basically just going to use drag detectors with a different set of settings and I'm just going to make it as simple as I can. But let's just start off by getting some kind of an object that we can actually drag. And it's just going to be this steel drum. And to talk a bit more about the system, normally if I just insert the drag detector into the steel drum, you can see that I'm able to basically just drag it. But there are gonna be different settings that, well, are gonna prevent basically this. And the system is also going to utilize collection service, where making the prop draggable is just going to be as simple as adding a tag down in the properties or from the view tab and then the tag editor window right here. And lastly, it's also going to operate on the object's mass, because you can see that this property is going to change if I increase the size of this object. And that's just to make it more reliant on the different object sizes. But let's actually just get into scripting by adding a script into the server script service, which I'm going to move right here and just zoom it in. So this script is going to be called prop setup, and it's just going to handle the dragging logic. So let's just get the collection service first by doing the game get service method and the collection service and let's set the prop tag which can be set to just set drag. Then let's make a function that we are going to connect to one of the collection service methods. And what this function is going to be, this is just going to be on prop added which is not going to return anything and it's going to expect an object of the type any. And later on, we're gonna check if this object is actually going to be a base part or a model, since that's what the drag detector instances basically operate on. So right now, I'm just going to do collection service, then the get instance added signal, which expects the tag, that's going to be the prop tag, and then I'm just going to connect a function. And this function is going to be the on prop added. And here, I'm just going to print out the object that name, and then just copy the set drag string, and just quickly do a playtest. So if I go to the server view, then go down to the tags from the properties and I insert the set drag tag, you can see that it's going to print out the name of the steel drum. So there is one more thing that we are going to do and is to set up this function for already existing objects. So I'm going to make another function, which is going to be called set existing. And again, it's not going to return anything. And the set existing function is going to be called right after the get instance added signal connection. And now this is just going to be a for loop for index and the prop in pairs. And here we need to use another collection service method, which is going to be called get tag from again the prop tag. And then just do. And we just want to call this function for the prop. So now if I add the tag in the properties to the steel drum, so now it's going to have the set drag tag and then do a run test it's going to print out the name of this steel drum right here. So let's actually get to scripting the onprop added function, where first you need to check if the object is a certain type, where I'm just going to have a table of types called instance types that's going to be equal to a table that has the type names like model, base part, part and then a mesh part. And then just do a check, if not table.find, then the haystack is going to be the instance types, and then the needle is going to be object.class name. Then I just want to set a warning message saying object doesn't have the right type. Then set the object, followed by a dash, then two dots, and then object.class name. And I'm just going to move this out and just do return end. So this is how this line is going to look like. And let's actually just test it out by adding, for example, a folder and just giving it the setDrag tag. So if I do a run test now, it's going to say that object does have the right type and it's going to say folder followed by the class name of a folder. So this is working correctly. Then we basically just want to create the drag detector, which is going to be instance.new and just a drag detector. Then the drag detector is going to be parented under the object. So if I do a playtest now, I'm going to be able to drag the barrel like I was able to do so previously. And now let's get to scripting different settings for the drag detector, because that's what we actually need to set. So I'm going to add a module under the script. This is going to be called drag settings. And what this module is going to return is just going to be a table. And if I just create a drag detector instance, I want to basically just get some settings from the property names. For example, the max force, the max torque and responsiveness. So I'm just going to do that here. 
So it's going to look like this. But now we basically need to require the script by doing local settings is equal to require, then script that drag settings. Then we can set the drag detector that max force to be the settings that max force. And I should probably just change the variable name actually, because there is already another settings global. Then that max force, same with max torque, like so. And I've set the max force to a really low number because like I said, I want this to be responsive to the object's mass because I want to multiply the max force by the mass of the object. So I'm just going to do times mass and then just do local mass is going to be equal and let's just leave it to 1 for now because I need to check if the object is a model first to later check if it's going to have the primary part. So we do local is model is equal to the type of object to check if it's a model. Then if his model is going to be true, then I want to look for a primary part. And then just do if primary part, then I want to set the mass to the primary and then the get mass method. And then else if it's not going to be a model, meaning that it's going to be a part of a mesh part, I can just do mass is equal to object then the get mass method again. And I'm just going to print it out and this is going to be the mass for this object. So if I do a run test, it's going to print out this mass, where if I go to the object and then scroll down to the mass property, it's basically going to be the same. So now the max force of the drag detector is going to be 567. But if I, for example, duplicate this object, then make it a little bit bigger and just do a play test, now the max force of this drum is going to be 3890. So if I drag this object, it's going to basically just work like this. And for the bigger one, it's going to be a little bit harder. It's going to be basically responsive for the bigger one too. And I wanted to use something like this, because if I just comment out this line and then change the settings to like a thousand, for example, and then do a playtest, you can see that it's going to be really easy to drag this object, but it's not going to be as easy for this one. It's going to be pretty much impossible. So I'm just going to reverse everything and just leave it like this. But we also need to somehow stop the dragging, for example, whenever the player drags the object too far away. And we are going to need another table for that. And that table is going to be called connections, which is going to be equal to and just leave it as an empty table for now. And we are going to need to make three different connections where I'm just going to first set the connections from object to an empty table again. And I just do these connections from the drag start, the drag end, and the drag continue events. So connections from object from drag start is going to be equal to the drag detector from right here, that drag start. Then I want to connect another function, and this function will need few parameters, as you can see from this window right here. So we get the player, then the ray, view frame, then there is the VR input, and the mode key down. And this function again doesn't need to run anything. So basically from the drag start, if I just get the drag detector again, I just want to set the reference instance, which is going to be this property right here, to the humanoid root part. So I'm going to do character, is going to be equal to the player who dragged, that character, and if there is no character then I want to return end. Then do local humanoid root part, which is going to be character find this child, and just humanoid root part. And again, if not humanoid root part, then I just want to return an end. Then I just want to set the drag detector, that reference instance, to be the HRP. And then I want to basically just copy this, delete everything except the drag detector reference instance, and basically just set it to nil, and change the drag start to the drag end. And I also need to remove all of these parameters, except the player, because the drag end only has the player who dragged. And lastly, we need to set the field event where I'm just going to delete everything from here. And instead of drag start, this is going to be the drag continue, where this event, it doesn't seem to work all the time. For example, on older plays versions. I had some people even say to me that the drag detectors don't even work for them in studio, but I'm not exactly sure what's going on. And anyways, right now I'm just going to get the reference instance, which is going to be the humanoid root path from right here, which is set to the drag detector, that reference instance. Then I want to do if not reference instance, then return end. And inside of this event, what I'm going to do is basically check if the object is too far away from the player. And if it's going to be, then I'm just going to reset the drag detector. So I'm going to make an if statement to check if the object that that position minus the reference instance that position that magnitude is going to be more than some kind of a value and for now I'm just going to set it to 20 and then I just want to disable the drag detector so I'm going to set the enable property to false and just enable it again 
So if this code, if I do a playtest and just try to drag one of the objects, it's basically just going to stop the drag. You can see from the icon that I'm still holding the left mouse button, but I'm not able to drag the object. So again, this is pretty much working. And what I can do with this value is also put it into the drag settings, for example, as a variable of max range, which I can set to 25. Then instead of 20, I can do drag settings dot max range. And with this one, I can also change the drag detector dot max activation distance to be the same as the max range from right here. And this is pretty much it, except we need to do one more thing with the connections table, and that is to actually not create any memory leaks. So I'm just going to make another function where if this one was on prop added, this one is going to be on prop removed. And again, it's going to be object that is on any. And all I need to do in this function is just have a reference to the constraints table by doing if connections from the existing object, then, I basically just want to do a for loop, placeholder then the connection, in Paris connections from object do, and I just want to do connection and then disconnect. And now I need to connect this function into the collection service method, which is going to be called get instance removed signal. Again from the prop tag, and then I'm going to connect the on prop removed. And in this function again, I'm just going to print out the connection. So say if I do a run test, and just delete this barrel, it's only going to print out one connection and that's because, well, I am actually stupid and this was supposed to be drag start, this was supposed to be drag end, and this one is drag continue. So now if I do a run test and again delete this barrel, it's going to delete three different connections. And something like this is good because if you had, for example, a map that had props that you could drag and you would load those props after a round, you would have all of these connections basically just stacking up and create memory leaks. And also if you want to change different settings from the drag detector, for example, you wanted to change these controls, you could also add them as a property in this table and then just write them right here. And also a little bit of a correction because I was just rewriting some stuff to make it a bit easier and I realized that this system doesn't really work too well with models and also I did a mistake because this was supposed to be a class name and not a type of but basically we kind of need the primary part and that's because we can really get a position of the model if it doesn't have a primary part. So here I just check for the primary and just give this warning while getting the mass and then down in the drag continue event I basically just make a object variable to set the primary part to it, and I say if the object is missing a primary part. So this right here is a model without a primary part, and if I try to drag it, it's just going to error, but this one, this is a model that actually has a primary part, and when I drag this one, it's going to work. And these are some other values that I was basically just messing around with. But yeah, that's a mistake on my part, and I will make sure to include this fixed version in the description. But anyways, but yeah. I'm also going to add a little readme to basically just tell you to add the tag into an object that you want to drag. But yeah, that is basically going to be everything for today. So again, go check out my Patreon page and leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. Thank you for watching, hope everyone has a nice day and see you guys.